Mission. Why does hate dwell so near love in the human breast? Does it spring from the same well to become divided by the furrows and ridges of the mind? And where does the hate stream end? These are questions with a definite purpose flung before the opening curtain of our story, A Story of Clinging Hate, starring William Gargan. when flying was a dangerous profession, some of the more daring pilots found their way to the airline run above the towering Andes. Here, disaster lurked on every mountain peak. It was in San Mario, a tiny refueling station on this airline, that Ted Jordan stood in the pilot's room staring out into the dense blackness. Before his mind, the vivid picture of Mary glowed. Back in the shadows, a lurking hate for someone was ready to stalk and cover all good emotions. This was a grinding, relentless surge of obsession. Well, uh, you've got something on your mind, Ted. Come on, come on, spill it. Oh, it's Mary, Nick. Mm-hmm. I thought so. She's been gone two weeks. Seems like a lifetime. You know, it's a funny thing, Ted... When you first came down here to fly this run, I figured you was a guy who traveled alone. You just didn't seem like the kind who let a woman get under your skin. <laughs> of course, that was before I met Mary, your wife. I think she's tops. You bet she is. There aren't any more in the world like her. Where'd you ever find a girl like that? I wondered myself, Nick. Seems like Mary came along at the time I needed her most. She kind of drifted into my life about two years ago when I was flying the Salt Lake Mail out of L.A. and... She was a hostess on the Frisco passenger run. I'd seen her around, and we knew each other, but I think it really began one day in the restaurant at the airport. I was having an argument. Wait. Mr. Jordan, I don't do the cooking here. I just serve the stuff. Stuff is right. I wouldn't feed that junk to a pig. Take it back and bring me what I ordered. But this is what you ordered. I wrote it down right here. Don't call me a liar. You can take this junk and scrape it off the floor. Oh! You and this whole chiseling outfit can get down and pick it up. How do you like that? And that. Mr. Jordan, I'll have to pay for this. Pay for it, my eye. I'll pay for it. Then I'll tear this place apart and you and all the rest of it with it. Huh? But, Mary, they just... Don't try to explain to me, you hot-tempered idiot. I don't know what got into him, ma'am. All of a sudden, he I just... I know, I know. Ted, get down there and pick those things up. But he tried pick to... Pick them up. Go on. Oh, all right. There. Satisfied? Yes. And the next time you start throwing things, I hope someone throws them right back at you. Hey, Mary, wait a minute. Well, what do you want? Walk over to the office with me, will you? Come on. Mm. Ted, why do you do things like that? Well, because nobody's going to play me for a sucker. There's one thing I hate. Oh, a... Ted, the trouble with you is that you don't understand any other feeling but hate. Now, wait a minute. Somewhere along the line, someone must have hurt you. And ever since then, you've been fighting back without knowing what it is you're fighting. You're a funny kid. I wonder why it is I, I never noticed before that you were pretty. You know, you're darn pretty. Don't change the subject. All right. I know I'm everything that's rotten and no good, which is what you're going to tell me, but that's the way I am, so let's go on from there. You know, I happen to think you can be broken down. You can't be too tough not to have a brother like yours. You know my kid brother, Mary? Of course I do. Gave me a second-hand course flying at breakfast this morning. Yeah? He tells me Wade McCary is going to give him a couple more hours, and then he'll be ready to solo. How do you like that? My baby brother, 16 years old, not out of rompers yet and flying airplanes. Sure. <laughs> and when he gets a few hours piled up, he's liable to show you you're not the only hot pilot in the family. <laughs> You've got a swell brother, Ted. Well, you ought to be. I raised him from a pup. The only thing I haven't been able to do for the kid is teach him to fly. Never had time. He'll be all right in the air, though. He's got it in him. You think an awful lot of Billy, don't you? More than I've ever told anybody. Mm, yes. There's a heart somewhere inside of you. It's made of iron, I think, but there's some soft spots in it. 
Well, I'm sorry, Ted. I've got to run. The chief stewardess is waiting for me. Oh, wait a minute. What are you doing tonight? Let's have dinner and see a show, huh? Sorry, I already have a date. Who is? Wade McCary, Billy's instructor. Oh, McCary, huh? Tell him three's the crowd. I'll see you at your apartment at six o'clock. You can't, Ted. I've already promised him. You've changed your mind. I'll explain it to him. See you at six. Listen, Jordan, let's not have any trouble. I made this date with Mary a week ago. I'm not making any trouble. She's going with me. Please, Ted, be reasonable. I'm being reasonable. Go on, McCary. Take a walk for yourself. Okay, you're asking for trouble, Ted. Okay, I'm asking for trouble. Why don't you do something about it? Now, get out of here. I'll throw you out. All right, if that's the way you feel about it, Ted. I'll leave. I'm sorry. Goodbye. There's only one way to handle guys like that, and that's treat them rough. Yes, and there's only one way to treat people like you, and that's like this. Hey! There, maybe you understand that. What's the idea? You had a slap coming to you. You think you can get anything you want with your fists and that hateful temper of yours. You're not living in the Middle Ages, Ted. Oh, I guess I've done it again, haven't I? You certainly have. No, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why I do things like that. I, I know it's all wrong. I, I do it before I think. Maybe it's the way I'm made. I, I don't know. All I could think of just now is that I wanted to be with you and McCary was standing in the way. You've got to change, Ted. If you don't, that, that evil that's in you is going to make you terribly unhappy. Something frightful is going to happen. I know, Mary, but before it's never mattered much. I, I've never cared what anyone thought or how anyone felt. It. Maybe I've been wrong. You have been wrong. You know it. Why not give me a chance to prove that I'm not all bad, Mary? I, I, I promise I'll try. All right. I'll give you a chance. But so help me from now on, whenever that hateful disposition of yours comes out, I'm going to slap you seven ways from Sunday. Hey! Hey! Look where you're going, fella. You want the whole sidewalk? Ted, it was an accident. He didn't mean to bump into you. Accident my foot. He's one of those smart guys who thinks he owns the world. I'm gonna... Ted. Huh? Come on. This time, the left side of your face. Oh, for the love of Mike, did you see that guy, Mary? He cut right in front of us. That's the kind of guys I hate. Hold on, baby. I'm gonna get even with that guy if I have to chase him all night. Ted! Stop the car. Uh oh. Look at me, Ted. Okay. It's nearly midnight, Ted. If you've got to take the mail out at six in the morning, you better go home. There's uh, something I've been wanting to ask you, Mary. Well? How have I been doing? Oh, you're doing swell. I'm really proud of you. Oh, thanks. I, I've been thinking about you and me, and now I see the whole thing. <laughs> when you're around, I feel different, oh, almost as if I'm another guy. That's, that's on the level. And what it all adds up to is that without you, well, I'm no good. Do you, do you get what I'm trying to say? Well, um, hmm? don't you think you could uh, say it a little more plainly? I guess what I mean is that I, I love you, Mary. I don't want us ever to be separated. And, and well, what's more, well, I... Well, uh, how about it, lady? Can, can you use a husband? Oh, okay. <laughs> Darling, you know, you said once that I'd never been happy. Well, I didn't know what you meant then because I didn't know what happiness was. I, I just didn't know the difference, that's all. And, and then you came along and... All of a sudden, I, I find there's a reason for living. It, it's wonderful. We'll save our money, and then you won't have to be flying the mail run. And we can settle down and live like other people. <laughs> you know, that's what I want to... <laughs> the thing I've always laughed at and kidded other guys about. Uh, now I want a house. And you'll be there, and whenever we go away, we can think how swell it's going to be to get home. Mm. Sounds nice, doesn't it? Yeah. I'll call Wilson, tell him to take the run for me in the morning. We'll pick up a plane, whip down to Las Vegas, and be married tomorrow afternoon. Is it a deal? It's a deal. Well, come on, come on. Start getting your stuff back to... Uh... Hello? 
Yes, this is Ted Jordan. Okay, go ahead. Put the call through. What is it? Long distance. Oh. Somebody calling from Fresno. Oh. Hello? Yes, this is Ted Jordan. Who's this? A Carrie? Where? He's... How'd you get out? I'll be right up. Stay there. I'll be right up. Billy's dead. Oh. He and McCary. Night cross country. Ship caught fire. McCary bailed out. Bailed out and left the kid in the ship. Oh. I'm going to kill him. Ted. I'm going to go up there and kill him. Ted, Ted, wait. I'm going with you. Hey, you are, you rat. I know, I know how you feel, Ted, but believe me, there, there was nothing I could do. Nothing you could do but leave that kid up there to burn. You didn't try to get him out. You did it to get even with me. Uh, Ted, let go of me. I, I tell you, I couldn't help it. I, I tried to get him out. You jumped and left him up there. You murdered him. You killed my brother. No, 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 Ted, I didn't. Ted, get... stop. Listen are to you... me. Let him go, Ted. Let him go. All right. <laughs> let him go. Go on, live. But you live knowing I'm going to pay you back, McCary. I'm going to pay you back. And now, back to our story of hate, starring William Gargan. The smoky little room at the airport faced the tall, steep cliffs of the Andes. In their shadow, the deep canyons were dark. And dark hatred burned within Ted's soul like the top fires when lightning strikes in the tall timber. In Ted's mind, the wall of angry, burning dark flame mounted into a roaring obsession. So, that's how we happen to be here, Nick. Mary and I got married and came down here to get away from trouble. Uh-huh. Well, Ted, whose idea was it? Uh, I mean, you're coming down here. Oh, Mary's, naturally. He was afraid what I might do if I was up in the States any place where I might run into Wade McCary. Oh, you still hate him, eh? I guess I'll always hate him. When Mary's around, I don't think about it so much, but once she's away, it all comes back to me again, and I think how good it'd feel to have his neck between my two hands. No, take it easy, no, take it easy, Ted. Mary will be back soon. She'll come back looking like a million dollars. Well, all those new clothes she's going to buy over in Port Domingo. I'm worried, Nick. It's two weeks since she left, and I haven't even had a letter from her. It's not like Mary to stay away like this without writing it. If she'd gotten a letter off the day she got there, I'd have had it by now. <laughs> you know, sometimes I'm glad I'm not married. You married guys worry too much. Of course, if I was married to a swell girl like Mary, uh, <laughs> maybe I'd worry too. Jordan? Oh, hello, Sparks. What's on your mind? Well, that telegram you sent to your wife at the Hotel Caprile in Port Domingo. Yes? Uh, did you get an answer? Let's have it, will you? Well, it isn't really an answer, Jordan. A telegraph office in Port Domingo just reported back that Mary wasn't there. She checked out of the hotel four days ago. Four days ago, huh? Well, thanks, Bob. Everything's all right, isn't it, Jordan? Yeah, sure, sure. Four days ago. Well, Nick, that means she's gone. <laughs> what? She's left me. Oh, don't talk crazy, Ted. Why, she's probably on her way back. Oh, there's a plane in here from Port Domingo every other day. It's the only way she could get here. Oh, I can't blame her. This is a rotten place for a woman. Stuck away in this godforsaken spot. Not even anyone she can talk yeah, to. Yeah, but you don't know, Ted. Don't get upset until you're sure. Oh, I tell you, Nick, I'm right back where I started from. You know why this happened, Nick? Wade McCaffrey. If it weren't for McCary, Billy would be alive, and Mary and I'd be living in the States, and we'd have a home. He's responsible. Ted, Ted, now don't look like that. You're talking out of your mind. You shouldn't say those things. Well, what do you know about well, it? Well... Oh, then shut up. But Ted, I'm only trying Get to... out of here, will you? Get out! Jordan, that you? Yeah. Hmm. Thought I heard somebody out here. It's four o'clock in the morning. What's the matter with you, Ted? I couldn't sleep. Came out to have a cigarette. Anything wrong? No, no, nothing's wrong. Ted, 
Ted, cook says it's three nights since you've eaten anything. He wants to know if there's something wrong with the way he cooks it. No, no. Tell him the food's all right. Maybe you'd like him to fix you something special. A little something extra. I don't want anything. Leave me alone, will you? All right, Ted. All right. Did you call for me, Sparks? Uh, yes, Jordan. We've got trouble on trip 17 coming in from Rio Pass. What's wrong? Well, the electrical system in the ship has gone out, lightning or something. He called me just before it went dead, said he didn't have enough gas to get back to Rio. He's going to have to come on in. See, that's tough. Any passengers aboard? Yeah, none registered. Well, what do you want me to do? Now, this is serious, Jordan. Trip 17 is going to come in over this storm. He can find the valley all right on compass, but he can't get down through this storm. So? So the skipper wants you to go up with your ship and guide him down on the beam. Got no radio at all, huh? Nope. Transmitter faded out just as he got his last message through, and I haven't been able to raise him since. I don't know, Sparks. The storm may be plenty thick and high. Are you sure he's up over it? Yep, he's up in the clear. He said he was at 16,000, and the storm was 1,000 feet under him. You see, Jordan, if he tried to bring down that crate through the soup line, he wouldn't have a ghost of a chance. Yeah. They'll have to put flares on the wings of my ship if he's going to follow me down. Uh, Skipper already taken care of that. Oh. The flares are hooked up and the ship's ready to go. I see. What time is he due over? Well, when his radio faded out, he was over Quantero Pass. That should put him over the field in, in 30 minutes. Can you make it? I think so. Good. I'll keep in touch with you from down here. And you better come down slow and easy. There's a new pilot on this trip. It's his first run in. Oh, that's great. Who's the guy? Well, some fellow the line shipped down from the States. Name's Wade McCary. Wade McCary. Yeah. You know him? No. No, no, no. I never heard of him. Well, you better get going. You've got a long climb up through this storm. Yeah. Yeah, a long climb. I'll be seeing you, Spock. in the San Mario, 11,000 feet, black as your hat and still raining. Going on up. San Mario to Jordan. Trip 17 should be there when you break out on top. If you don't see him, take a look around. He's coming in on a compass. Okay? Okay. I wonder how you'd feel, McCary, if you knew we were coming up to meet you. Guess you never thought it would end this way, huh? You'll die and they'll drag your body off a mountainside and I'll be there to see it. Jordan to San Mario. I've broken out on top in the clear at 14,000. I've spotted trip 17, okay? San Mario to Jordan. Nice going. Where is 17? He's coming toward me from the southwest at about 15,000. I've just pulled my flares and he sees me. Okay. Let him come in close and then come on down. Let me know if there's any trouble. Okay? Okay. Come on, McCary. Bring your coffin and get behind me. Jordan to San Mario. Starting down. Hold your lights on the field until I call you. Okay. Okay, Jordan. All right, Billy. Wherever you are, watch me get this guy. Watch me lead him into a mountain. Just a little further. Then a quick turn and that'll be it, McCary. All right, baby. This is where I'm getting off. Don't, Ted. Don't do it. Don't kill him. Mary. Please, Ted. Take him down safely. Mary. San Mario to Jordan. Are you doing all right? Jordan to San Mario. We're doing all right. What's the ceiling and wind? Okay. You have 800 feet. Wind southeast five. The rain's thinning out. You'll have some visibility. Okay? All right, Sparks. Tell him to light the field. I'll have trip 17 down in 10 minutes. Well, there's your pretty little airplane, Sparks. 
swell job, Jordan. The skipper will see that the head office hears about this. Nothing to it, Pappy. Uh, mind if I turn in now? <laughs> no, of course not. Hey, it's funny. You look different. What do you mean? Oh, I don't know. When you went out of here, you looked like you were man of the world. <laughs> Doggone it if you're eating smiling. That's something new for you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess it is. <laughs> Glad to see it. I was worried about you. Good night, Sparks. Good night, Jordan. Mary! Oh, Ted, darling, it's so good to be back. Mary, how did you get here? I came in on trip 17. Darling. Ted, what's the matter? Mary, why did you come in on that plane? Well, the truth, honey, is that in Port Domingo, I heard that Wade McCary was going to work for the line, and this was his first run in. I uh, wanted to be here when he arrived. You understand, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I... I understand. I was afraid that perhaps there might still be some old memories, you know. Mary, uh, this is going to surprise you, but uh, those memories are all gone now and now and forever. Oh, Ted, that's the most wonderful thing you could say. You sure? This time I'm sure, Mary. I knew McCary was coming in on trip 17. And the plane with the flares that brought us down? I was flying it. Oh. You'll never know what went through my mind up there. But you were with me when I needed you, Mary. I saw your face and heard your voice. Oh, Ted. I, I know now, Mary, the, the, the old Ted Jordan that you've helped me to fight was lost tonight. And he'll, he'll never come back. Believe me, he'll, he'll, he'll never come back. Ted, I'll realize the beginning now. I know it. This is the beginning of the happiness we've waited for. Uh-huh. It seems that uh, a long time ago, there was three wise men who were guided by a star. Tonight, just one not-so-wise was guided by his star. What do you mean, Ted? Well, uh, sometime I'll tell you, darling. Sometime I'll tell you. <laughs> been listening to Obsession.